Hello everyone, this is part one of this demo and I will show you how to attach a sprue to our wax model and how to prepare it for investing. Safety, you must turn the extractor fan on when working at the sprueing station. Tools and equipment, we are going to use a heat gun with a thermostat uh, bring your steel block and a third hand as well as a wax tool, a small spatula. When you work, work right underneath the hood of the fan. Choose a flask. For this project we need a small size flask about 8 cm in height and about 7 in diameter. You must choose a rubber base that fits very tightly on the flask and try it, make sure it, it is tight. If it is loose, it will come off during investing and cause a lot of problems. You must clean the flask and the base, scrub it to remove any debris that might be inside. We are going to use a red sprue wax, a wire sprue wax, 8 gauge in size. This is a round wire and it's softer than uh, your carving, carving wax. We are going to first attach a sprue to the thickest part of our model, which is the base of the shank, which should be 2 mm thick. The rest will be 1 to 1.5 mm thick, so much thinner. First, we must prepare the sprue. We are going to use a double sprue for this project. So we cut two uh, short sections of the wax wire, about two or three centimeters on the st steel block. And we are going to heat up the space uh, between the two sprues to make them stick together with the heat gun. and you can use your spatula to smooth out. We are going to drip a little bit of wax in the gap that was between these two sections. Hold your sprue with the third hand to keep it steady and drip the wax from another piece on top of the sprue and smooth out with the heat gun. Now, this will be attached to our wax model, again at the bottom of the shank where it is the thickest. We are going to place our ring upside down on the steel block and keep it steady with the third hand. With the heat gun, we melt a little bit the end of the sprue, one end of the sprue, and press it down on the shank.
and then we wait and hold until the wax cools down and solidifies. Before we go to the next step, we have to add some wax where the sprue is connected to the ring, to the model. That's what we call a fillet. We always need to have a fillet at the, the joint between the sprue and the model. So we're going to add more wax there and smooth it out so there is no abrupt step between the different parts of the model. What we want is a nice, smooth slope or transition. And that's because we don't want to interrupt the flow of the metal when casting. So, this is how you can position your model, leaning on your third hand so that you can add wax all around the sprue, the base of the sprue. Be very careful with the heat gun. Do not touch the model with it or it would be damaged. Uh, you could even melt it. Um, you can also adjust the thermostat if you feel that the heat gun is too hot. So the final uh, uh, check, uh, touching up, making sure there's no uh, abrupt transition, making sure that everything is nice and smooth. Okay, so we are ready for the next step. Now we are going to cut the sprue to the required length, which should be about 10 millimeters. So we are going to use the spatula. Uh, or the heat gun to cut it on the steel block. At this point, we should weigh the sprued model and write down this weight on your casting weight calculations worksheet. Now we're ready to attach the sprued model to the button. But before, we must check that the button is really round and smooth. So we will add uh, some wax. We can drip some wax on top of the button. Smooth out with the heat gun. And make sure it is uh, nicely rounded. You can use your spatula as well, if you prefer. When you are ready, you can, with the heat gun, melt the wax a little bit on the top of the button, press down the sprued model on top of the button in the middle, and wait and hold until the wax has hardened. Very important. This must be a strong and secure connection to prevent it from detaching during the investment process. So take time to uh, check it and make sure it is not going to come off. Next, we need to make another fillet just like we did at the top of the sprue with the ring. So 
good way to do it is to place your rubber base at an angle on the third hand and this way you can access all around the base of the sprue. Take some sprue wire and uh, melt it all around. And again, make sure there is a nice smooth slope, a nice transition between the button and the base of the sprue. Okay, final check. Let's have a closer look. And that's what we have at this point. With the fillets at, at the base and at the top near the ring. That's what the fillets are. Check the clearance. You need to have 15 millimeters minimum on top and 10 on the sides. That's it. We are now going to prepare some investment and fill out the flask. Investment looks like fine plaster. It hardens and becomes the mold once the wax is lost or melts during the burnout stage in the oven. You can refer to the chart for the steps of the investment process. Remove the flask from the rubber base carefully and spray the model with debubbled solution three or four times from all angles. Fit the metal cover onto the rubber base, push down to make a tight seal and we are going to add masking tape around the base just to make sure the two uh, don't uh, separate later to make sure there is a good seal. And next, we mark our initials and the weight of metal needed in grams on the metal flask. This is the weight that you recorded on your worksheet. You can look at the chart to check what size is your flask and find out uh, what measurements you should follow for water and for uh, investment. So mine is size two and there is actually 2B and 2A, so make sure you get the right one. We are going to use the scale and the white plastic tray to weigh the investment. Make sure the scale is in grams, not ounces. And keep the scale in uh, the plastic cover. You need to be very precise with your measurements. So double check that. When you are done, close the plastic bag and replace the lid on the plastic container. Now 
now we can set the tray aside and we're going to mix some water we take still water from the gallon uh, bottles glass bottles near the sink and again we need to measure exactly the required volume of water in milliliters so again double check and be very precise with the measurement and we use still water to minimize the amount of bubbles in uh, the investment. We pour that water in a black rubber bowl and then add the investment that we measured in uh, the tray. We always add the investment to the water. And now we mix with, by hand, of course, with the gloves on, we mix until there are no more lumps in the mix and that's about three minutes so again keep track of your time there is a, a timer there that you can use but you cannot go beyond the three minutes or the investment uh, the mix will be hardened Be very thorough, check for lumps, and this is what it should look like at this point. For our next step, we are going to vibrate the rubber ball on the vibration machine. So turn the machine on hold on to the ball and and while maintaining contact with the machine you can uh, rotate it and and shake it you will see the air bubbles coming up to the top so continue until the the air bubbles disappear and that should be about two minutes Again, keep track of your time. This is very important. For the next step, we put the flask on the vibration machine, hold on to it, tilt it, and pour the mix from the rubber ball into the flask slowly and make sure you keep the two in contact with the machine once you have filled the flask you can straighten it out and and keep vibrating it for uh, another about 30 seconds <laughs> Again, you might see some air bubbles coming up to the top of the flask. The investment is not hard at this point. When it's done, you can turn off the machine and set your flask on the counter.
and we will uh, let it sit there until the investment is firm. And at that point, we can scribe our initials and the weight in grams, the weight of the metal that's needed for casting later. So we scribe this into the investment on the top of the flask. And we will uh, let the flask dry for another hour, remove the rubber base, and the flask will be then placed in the oven for the burnout, which is the next stage of the lost wax process. Thanks for watching.